From time to time, the news stops us in our tracks. And when that happens, Lori and I usually talk about it off air. This season, we're opening up those conversations with y'all. We're calling these episodes op-eds because there are opinions, our thoughts, prayers, and feelings about the current events. This week, we're talking about the Norfolk Southern train derailments. If you've been here before, you know we cuss, and today will be no different. If you're new here, please get used to it. <laughs> well, you know, I always want to say something right after you say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. Yes, motherfucker, please. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'll find any reason to just cuss. It's just... <laughs> just ex- ex- It's just an exhale. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's an exclamation point. Just... Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's anything yeah. you need it to be. Yes. <laughs> the jewelry of words. That's what Thank it is. Girl, I like That's that. Or the perfume. Yes. yes. Yeah. Just a little... Mm-hmm. Extra. Just a little psh, like. The best accessory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well... We are back again with my cousin, Harley Dave. And like I said in the previous episode with her, she is one of the most informed women that I know. And I love having conversations with her about what's happening, what um, is affecting us, how we're feeling about it. And when I saw what was happening in East Palestine and in Springfield, Ohio, I immediately thought of her and I wanted to bring her back on and have another conversation with her. So welcome again, Harley. Hello. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so Harley, we're going to start with you and okay. I'll ask you what's been better. Um, so just like I said, just being in a better mental state, um, space now that my, um, post-op post-surgery has happened I'm healing um I'm starting to get back in the regular groove of things I just started driving again after a month of not driving so super excited about Mm -hmm. that um and just like mentally and emotionally enjoying the relief of having had my surgery um and just like actively not (laughs) I guess disassociating sometimes because I just since Roe v. Wade, I was just like spiraling a little bit. So I'm just enjoying the present. That's so huge. That's good. That's good. That's (laughs) really good. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Seriously. Because I know that that was a lot, a whole lot. So I'm glad you're on the mend and I'm glad you're getting out there. Yeah. Back to living Next week will be six weeks and then I'll be back. No restrictions, nothing anymore. Wow. Oh, that's good. That's good news. Yes. Yes. So, so Sylvia, what's been better with you? Well, I am back home. I went to see my mom for a week. And of course, that was just awesome as usual. Um, Did a bunch with her, with her garden, which has now expanded. I saw. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, I am feeling overjoyed because this show reached 1,000 downloads. Yay! So, <laughs> so yeah. Yes, I'll probably snap on, put snap. out 3,000 posts about it or I might not. I don't know yet. I'm just feeling everything right now and seeing the news right now has me feeling a certain way. So I'm just I'm going in different directions but that kind of brought me into focus yeah Yeah. so it was feels like you got your foot in the door it does and it feels like all of the hard work all of it has been worth it yes it's paying off yeah and congratulations sylvia i want you to know from me to you how much i appreciate you right and and that how these a thousand downloads really wouldn't be like that like we wouldn't have them without you and Mm -hmm. I need you to know how much I notice the hard work right I appreciate you so much I just want you to know that thank you like thank you for sticking this out because I was not sure where this was going (laughs) (laughs) so yeah just yeah and thank you Harley for being a listener since the beginning of course honestly like I appreciate it I appreciate every single person that I know listens mm-hmm. that I know mm-hmm. then that listens, listens. Yeah. Yes. yes like yeah I appreciate it y'all you 
I had a crying moment I love moment the journey earlier. from the beginning to now to this thousand dollar or thousand dollar. <laughs> well, and, look, and from your ear, your uh, your mouth to God's ears, please claim multiplied by right. multiple times. <laughs> multiple Manifesting. Times. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but yeah. thousand downloads, like it's. I'm so excited for you guys. Like I'm so happy for you and where you guys might go from here. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I'm I'm thankful to the listeners and to all the listeners from all over the world. Like yes. when Sylvia were uh she was telling me where like Ireland and mm-hmm. um and Japan. Yeah, Japan and Russia and just just all oh, the I different places. places. I what? love the list of countries that you guys are yes. being listened to and like that's amazing. You literally yes. are around the world. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you mentioned Australia at one point. Yeah, it's just yeah. So I'm I'm very thankful to all the listeners and my prayer, and I I know Sylvia's prayers too. Is we hope that this finds you in a way that's going to make your life better. Yes. Like that's the the main hope that we really hope that this podcast will help our lives, your lives, be better than it was yesterday. Yes, mm-hmm. please. I, I I pray the same exact prayer honestly yeah. well what's been better for you Lori yes so I got a chance to um hang out with a good friend yesterday that I hadn't seen since COVID hit oh wow crazy that I hadn't seen her in three years and it's crazy to imagine that it has been three years yeah it feels like no time has passed but all right. the time has passed <laughs> Yeah, right. it feels like 8,000 years has passed but it's also mm-hmm. like that was yesterday right right mm-hmm. It's it's wild. So I'm thankful to be in 23. I'm thankful to be that far away from Mm -hmm. um, COVID. And I'm seeing more and more that people are out and about. And my hope is that we are taking care of ourselves. Um, What else? What else has happened? I'm having clarity on a lot of things. I've been doing a lot of praying, a lot of soul searching for my, um, my next steps in life. Mm-hmm. And so I'm getting clarity and that's a real, real good thing because I have been um, in a valley of decision, if it will, if you okay. are, as it were, and, and not really knowing and feeling confused. And I don't like to ever feel confused about anything because, no. you know, I that's just, that's an awful feeling to have. So I'm so much better and um, so clarity is beautiful and i'm very thankful for that cool cool, yes yes well before we get started if you haven't already hit the subscribe button share this like it do something with it (laughs) don't just keep it for yourself so uh let's have this conversation because watching the news in the last i would say pretty much all of february has been wild um so many things have happened that have had environmental impacts that were already really bad environmental impacts but like to add this on and to add it on and to see it Mm -hmm. happen like right in the backyards of the people that I love has been it has rocked me so I I don't know how y'all feel about it but we only have this one planet and to see it be harmed in ways that I know are preventable is, it it just is so jarring. Because I'm like, come on, y'all, wake up. Mm-hmm. We don't have to do this. We don't right. have to do this. We don't have to do this. And we keep doing it. Yeah. And we keep kind of gaslighting people into believing that it's not that bad. Or that mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, oh, I mean, you know, like, no. Which yeah. That's the part that always makes me enraged. Yeah. <laughs> I, I spend a lot of time when I think about um, the decision our government or corporations or even just people that I know make every day that directly harm our environment. We depend on our devi- environment to live our life. Mm-hmm. And you're directly doing something to harm that. I'm just so angry. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's been hard trying to um, focus that anger on something useful or productive. Right. Same. Um, yeah. Or just at least absolve it within myself a little bit so it's not taking over my life. 
or disrupting yeah. my relationships. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Well, Harley, what are you doing to prevent that? From preventing this from interfering with your relationships and your life? Um, well, I realized trying to just like not just trying to, I should say, um, like not listen, not read, not keep myself updated um, was actually doing more harm than good because then I was just spiraling on what I already knew. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's definitely a delicate balance between keeping myself informed, but making sure to recognize when I start going down these rabbit holes, intense rabbit holes of, mm -hmm. you know, who did what and why and basically trying to trace this problem back to the source and mm -hmm. I'm trying to do that at home. Like I'm, I'm not a professional. This is something that I can't really do, but here I am trying to be my own private investigator and do that. And right, then right, right. having to realize, well, if I do find out this information, what can I do as a private citizen yeah. about this? I mean, I'm, I'm not in that boardroom. I'm not lobbying. And honestly, I would hate to be a lobbyist. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. fight all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I completely so it's just get kind it. Of, you know, looking for those triggers and taking the step back and then really like recognizing the relationships and family that I have and making sure while all of this chaos is happening, I'm still keeping up on these relationships. I'm still watering these relationships. I'm still making sure that the people closest to me at least. I have a direct impact in their lives and me being angry all the time isn't helpful to, the, to them or me. Right. right. So right. just yeah. that, I think that's the most that I can do right now. <laughs> I, well, that's, that's I good. completely that's, get it. Yeah. I completely get it because it, it reminds me of when I was writing. I was writing about so many things that were happening like right in front of me and it was just like overwhelming because you're like, how do I do? What do I do? What can I do? Is there anything I can do? But you have all the information that is available. Yeah. And you're like, anybody that you talk to, you want to talk about it. But those people are not informed. And they're like, I don't want to talk about it either. Right. Like, mm -hmm. You so almost sound like a conspiracy theorist to them. Right. It's like, it's right there in right. black and white. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, it's so there, y'all. It's there. <laughs> I know that you see it, you know, like, oh. For me, it was the same thing of like um, police brutality, police oversight, um, mm -hmm. all the surveillance that was happening. Like I was writing about there being more than 10,000 cameras in Atlanta and like people weren't blinking about it. They weren't even like, wow. they were just like glazed over like, okay. Yeah. And that right. reminds me of that movie, Don't Look Up. It's the yes. same. It's the same. It's the same. <laughs> I I love that movie. I've watched yeah. it a few times now, and because it's just like that's exactly what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Don't yeah. look up. No one's looking up. <laughs> right, because right. it's the ultimate gaslight. It's the ultimate yeah. like mm -hmm. you don't see what you see. You yeah. know, and and the whole point is to find that balance. Because you can't lose your mind trying to convince others to care about something that you care so passionately about. Yeah. But then it's like, right. what what can you do in your own space yeah. to make a difference? Because it's like, this is going to harm you. There's no other way to tell anyone else this. Like, it's like the train derailments didn't happen right by Harley but mm -hmm. they're close enough you know yeah. what I'm saying yeah so people that are in and around your area who are like oh you know no big deal is like we are downwind <laughs> we are right. downstream mm -hmm. it's coming yep, yeah it's gonna happen yeah. but yeah like what do you do and then to see the people who who live in Springfield who live in in um help me what's East the other Palestine. place East Palestine, who live in East Palestine, who are directly affected, who themselves were being gaslit. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's no big deal. It's yeah. Not, we're doing this to make it less impactful. Yeah. You exploded a train with right. toxic chemicals. I don't think this was going to be less impactful because we're not living under a dome like on The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Like, this is... 
which is yeah. which is wild to me is it and you know i'm i'm kind of in and out but mm-hmm. they exploded to the train to cover up or they no the not train. to cover up to basically help like as a part of cleaning up to yeah. burn off some of the tox so it wasn't as toxic but really mm-hmm. you, all you did it's a carcinogen already so all you did right. was make it worse you literally so, just accelerated the right. process <laughs> so because this is somebody didn't ask for somebody else's advice like did they think this thing through like this doesn't even make sense um well i think it came down to because norfolk is already under fire for yes. financial like not using funds to actually keep up um on the train system and all of that so um I think it was more of trying to get it done quickly as possible and not Mm -hmm. um, in the best way for the environment and the people who live there. Um, Just basically just one big giant sweep it under the rug. But what you did was you burned the rug while you were trying to do it. Right. (laughs) And you you just ultimately, ultimately made everything worse. Right. Yes. And then I think also, um, not to sound conspiracy theorist again, but seeing that the president didn't show up that you're just sending whoever and sending whoever days and days and days and days later also Mm -hmm. has implications to me of like, well, what are we doing? Because I see you going to Ukraine and I see you cutting checks to Ukraine and I see you Mm. saying we're going to stay here and do these things for them for as long as they need. But it's like, yes, we should help whoever we can help. That is not an American citizen. Yes. But, Mm -hmm. like, this is in your backyard. Right. Right. This is us. Like, I don't want to sound like a nationalist or anything like that. But, I mean, I don't know how not to when Americans that are hardworking Americans that are just trying to survive everything that has already been thrown at us Mm -hmm. are being just kind of like, oh, they'll be fine. Let's go cut another check to Ukraine. Let's go visit Ukraine. Right. So what does that say to you, though? Because there is something there. Like, what does that say to you? It says to me that we are being devalued and that we need to figure out a way. Again, I say this every time. Figure out a way to get on one accord Mm -hmm. and get on one accord quickly. Mm -hmm. Because there are more of us that are being impacted than are not. Right. And I think it's very scary when I see people just kind of have that glazed over look and it's right there behind Mm -hmm. you. It's right. Right. It's happening to you. And it's, and I think it's also very scary that we live in a time of corporate media Mm -hmm. controlling these narratives Mm -hmm. so minutely. I mean, like a number of train derailments and 18 wheeler overturns that have had toxic chemicals in the last 45 days that we don't know about because they're mm-hmm. not they are public knowledge but they're mm-hmm. not broadcast right out. right but i promise you we can tell you more details about what what's in ukraine how ukraine looks um what the weather's like how many people have been harmed what russia's doing all those things or turkey and syria or right. um, how excited this is another thing to like segue off of this is like people being excited about it snowing and raining in places where it never snows Listen. before <laughs> oh my god come on what I am like are we talking why about why is no one like what this don't is look insane up, y'all. it's, it's don't really look oh up. my god so don't I just spent up. a week in Arizona And I know that people go, Arizona, it doesn't get cold there. Okay, first of all, let me just tell you, we get every single climate there. It Mm -hmm. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You get in your car and you could be skiing and you could get in your car and you could be tubing down a lake. Mm -hmm. It's a thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But to see it snow in places where it's like the temperature don't get low. Yeah. It just, it should not happen. Right. Mm -hmm. To see like Southern California, people are being caught off guard because they've never owned a shovel Mm -hmm. they don't own tracks Mm -hmm. the chains for their tires Mm -hmm. they don't have a four by four they're they're just like we go to the beach like what are you talking to see that and then to juxtapose that with like watching the news and the the 
newscasters being like, this is so delightful. We have it's a, a winter wonderland. Day. Yeah. <laughs> What? And it's like, yeah, same thing with, um, there's been some more snow in Albuquerque, uh, where my mom's side of the family is than there has ever been before. Yeah. And yeah. my family telling me about it, like, can you believe we're going to get two inches and like two inches in Albuquerque is like unheard of. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. When you're in the so, valley, it stays pretty dry it stays and warm dry. throughout yeah. the year. No, like you, you are getting more snow in the last few years than ever before. Yeah. So yeah. Harley, what does that say to you? <laughs> um, it says that we are too small to be important in the eyes of our governments, in the eyes of big corporation. Um, it just, you don't matter. Yeah. We don't matter. Yeah, the people who actively keep your this country going, your corporation going, you only got where you were because of us. Yeah, and yet you could care less what happens to us. Right, yeah. right. It's hard to to is a task to keep believing that you matter when there are so many things that tell you every day that you don't. don't. Yeah. That you don't have a voice, mm -hmm. that you need to just go back to normal, which normal, again, was not working for everyone, that um, that your voice can be silenced very mm -hmm. easily because you are informing, mm -hmm. not trying to scare. I also want us to get out of the idea that because I'm giving you a negative truth, mm -hmm. that it is scary or that mm -hmm. is harmful a or it's a personal truth. attack against you right mm -hmm. yeah a negative i would rather have a negative truth than a positive lie thank you any day mm -hmm. right and, and a positive lie you know what i'm saying how I, yeah. how like yeah that's a contradiction in terms if i ever heard one you think know about it think about it it's a delight that it is snowing in san bernardino <laughs> it is it is not it is we're, we're, we're making it less impact by exploding this train full of harmful carcinogens because it'll be less impact. Well, no. you've literally just said harmful carcinogen. Right. <laughs> like, well, the whole what? point to me, I think, is, is to, one to distract. Yeah. It's to say, you don't see what you see in this hand. Let me show you this hand. Yeah. Right. What's over here in this hand? It's a little bit better over here. Absolutely. Because you, because you can't handle the truth. Oh. You, you see? Yes. I, and how yeah. the hell are you going to tell me I can't handle the truth? And then the other thing is, as we talk about this, what are some possible solutions? Because where do we go from here? The spillage is taking place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the, the overcorrection has caused more damage. Mm -hmm. And we have snow. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's never snowed before, which lets me know there that it's a major sign of the times. Mm -hmm. It's really letting me know that a lot of things are wrapping up before our eyes that we don't even recognize. No. And so, so I'm, I'm curious to know from you all, if you were president, the president, what do you do about this? Or if you were anybody in um, the role of power, what happened? Wow. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of courageous conversations have to happen. Yeah. I think we need to tell people the truth of like, your water's dirty. Your, your, your soil is dirty. <laughs> you know, the air isn't clean either. And here are real tangible steps, piece by piece, bit by bit, that we can try to mitigate these circumstances. They're not going to be... 100% impactful right now mm -hmm. but to, over time it didn't take five minutes to get here it's not going to take five minutes to get out of it so all of this waiting around and we just have to see and that's going to take too much time and we don't want to do it we've got to at least start right because I don't think that we're even trying right I really don't think that mm -hmm. we're we're too worried about inconveniencing people and or looking bad or looking mm. at yeah 
Mm-hmm. So I don't think I think somebody has to stand up and be the quote unquote bad guy. Yeah. Who's going to help us. Right. right. And people aren't worried about that. They are worried about staying in power. They are worried about not letting the other group get power. They are, mm-hmm. you know, so if it was me, mm-hmm. I'll be the villain if it means that I'm going to make sure that children are not harmed the way that mm-hmm. they are being harmed. Right. Right. I would be the bad guy to tell people that, like, hey, even Social Security and um, what is it, Medicaid Part Part Z, the prescription mm-hmm. part of Medicaid, yeah. mm-hmm. that being toyed with right now. So it's like you have people that are quote unquote on their way out being hurt, and you have people who are just now getting here being hurt. Right. Somebody has to be okay in this situation. And I would rather it be the masses than a, a select few who aren't helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. taking accountability because if no one is taking yeah. accountability because everyone is pointing fingers at each other, yeah. Um, then you'll never be able to even break down the steps to begin to make it better to resolve right. the issue to actually fix it even if it takes 5 10 20 years from now if no one is taking kind of accountability we'll be right back where we are yeah. and so yeah. i think that would be my biggest thing is accountability right just let's yeah. let's own what's going on mm. right so that we can move forward yeah cuz i don't think I don't think the ownership part of that is as difficult as people have made it out to be in over these decades. I think it's um it's it's a conversation that you have to have with these largest company uh, countries in the world and the largest companies in the world to say, "Hey, our impact is really harmful. We cannot keep blaming this on the quote unquote third world countries who Mm -hmm. could never have this kind of impact Mm -hmm. we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and go okay we've got to stop this we've got to Mm -hmm. stop acting out we gotta be good now right? or just stripping it completely down to what political party you are a part of or you identify with Right. (laughs) that stops a lot of things right then and there as it relates then to this this, these toxic uh, chemicals just being wasted mm-hmm. in Ohio and then even to a larger degree because now they've uh, you know there's been an explosion who just it just made it worse now what though like how do we make this better like if we're owning it still yes we fucked up somebody fucked up mm-hmm. you know then what do we evacuate these people uh, okay they have to leave this area or what happens what what happens to these people i think been affected i think doing more than what did they cut them harley like a thousand dollar check oh yeah it it was like what the fuck it was a thousand dollars but it was like thousands of dollars compared to the fact that they made billions of dollars in profit last year when you see that kind of big disparity and and a cleanup or in a mess this big Um, this prolific when we don't even know exactly what's going to happen that requires long-term funding as well not just a short term here's $25,000 figure it out Um, and then we'll just go right back to business no one really knows how far and deep this impact really is so that means also not only taking accountability but actually mapping out a plan a long-term plan of how yeah. you're going to have this resolved or how you're at least going to keep monitoring monitoring it so you can figure out how to um, resolve it. Right. Makes sense. Because we're also s- still living in a country where healthcare is privatized. So giving those people a check, knowing full well that that check is not going to cover any right. kind of medical procedures that exist in this country because we don't have the unified, I'm sorry, universal health care that we should have. Right. Or, yeah, or just the fact that you don't know what you can do medically. um, Because, I mean, a lot of people, like my friend person, like I said, for a week she had headaches. I mean, how do you quantify that and go to your doctor and be like, I've been having headaches for a week? Well, we know what the cause is, but medically, like, how can we pinpoint that in your body? That's going to take long term medical care. 
right uh, mm-hmm. medical documentation so cutting someone a thousand dollar check yeah it's not gonna last you you have no. to plan you have to make a plan for this and no one yep. is doing that they're not even willing mm. to entertain the conversation and admit what happened or at right. least begin the process of cleaning up so if you mm. can't even do that then long-term care is out the door and 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 we're doing this all while we're still in a pandemic right. yeah it might not be as as active as it was three years ago almost to the day but it's still the there, impact of that you still have to quarantine if you get positive for right. covid so it's definitely still a factor yeah and we're the hospitals are still under stress from from that they haven't mm-hmm. recovered so now you're adding in however much long-term care that these people are going to need is you know it, it, it's the impact goes a lot wider than just springfield and east palestine right. and all the other places where there were derailments and 18 wheelers overturned and factories being shut down because of whatever they were doing i mean so many things have been happening mm-hmm. to people and it's been Oil, happening lines everything yeah for longer than people realize at a frequency yeah. that people don't realize yeah. um i mean i'm i can google now actual environmental disasters from accidents like this and you'll be shocked to realize that probably within a year there was like 50 last year i don't know that i'm just saying mm-hmm. off the top of my head but it could be that high and you're like why have i never heard of this mm-hmm. right <clears throat> right But the ultimate thing is, even if we've heard about all of them, right, Mm -hmm. then what? Like what what happens? Because one one like when I share with you all, like hearing these different things, Mm -hmm. my heart just wants to explode because it's like, what happens now? So what happens to all these people? How do they get cared for? Like. You know, and then if I hear about that multiplied times, however many it happens to. Right. And all of the people who are affected by this, who really don't have a voice. Yeah. Because that's the thing. They don't have a voice. And then you have people who speak for them who don't care about them. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so my my ultimate thing is where do we go from here and how and how how do we heal? Do we heal? Can we heal? I, I I always have hope that there's a possibility of healing because okay. I always have I always have hope that better is possible. Um, I don't have like a solid this is exactly what we do. Yeah. Right? But yeah. I do know that whatever we do does mm-hmm. not involve the top one percent who are looking to make money out of it. Mm-hmm. Right? It involves all the ninety nine percent rest yeah. of us yeah. who say okay we are going to as a micro situation try to Mm -hmm. figure out how we can impact a macro situation Mm -hmm. so to me i think educating people Mm -hmm. is the very first thing yes yes planning like harley said is the next thing i think then you get moving piece Mm -hmm. by piece because once everybody knows hey this 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 and this are happening Mm -hmm we can start speaking in a way together because when you think about it let's think about it like this if you wear a republican hat Mm -hmm. you get a script every week that says these are the things that we are all going to be on one accord about and they stick to it you know think about how how long and how hard they said we do not want roe v wade we do not and they said it President after president, senator after senator, speaker of the house after speaker of the house. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. And they just kept chipping away at it, kept chipping away at it because they stayed on brand for that thing. They've Mm -hmm. stayed on brand of we want small government. They've stayed on brand of like very specific things. And they've gotten those things that they wanted because they've been on one accord. Democrats and liberals we can't agree on basic shit. Mm. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Think, we can't agree do we want to be Democrats or do we want to be liberals? Right. We can't mm-hmm. agree that we want to have um, 
unified front on this or unified front on that. Well, shit, we could have all of it. Mm-hmm. But now, we can never start fighting. Right. What do you think that's due to? I think because people think that they are allies and they should just be working on being good people. Right. Mm. You awesome. need to be a human first. Yeah. Fuck a label. Yeah. Damn every label that you could come uh, up with. Yeah. I'm an ally. I'm a liberal. Mm-hmm. I, I'm Democrat. I vote for this. I vote I for that. I was just I'm about f- to say there's so many subdivisions when it comes exactly. to being a Democrat or a liberal. And those motherfuckers are just conservatives. Mm. That's it. Yep. Wow. That's all they are. They are fiscally responsible conservatives with wow. family values. Think about it. Think about every single one of them. But if you heard a Democrat, you could be far left, you could be centrist, you could be liberal, you could be Green Party, you could be all these different things. Grassroots, yeah. Pick, <laughs> yeah. Pick, yeah. Pick a script <laughs> and stick with it. <sighs> get on one damn accord. If we right. could get on one accord, we would not be in these fucking situations. Because when you think about it, we gave you the presidency. Mm -hmm. We gave you the Senate. We gave you the House. You had all Mm -hmm. three. How the fuck did you blow that lead? You blew it because you couldn't agree with who you wanted to agree with about what we were going to do. You stood around and argued about what we should and shouldn't do. And you wanted to work across the aisle with Republicans. Fuck that. They didn't want to do that with us. Look at them now. Wow. Wow. What are we Mm -hmm. holding hands with people that have disdain with us for? Wow. Why are we still trying to convince them that we are we? We ain't been we for a long time. They never wanted to we be never we. never been we. <laughs> right. Fuck are we hit standing around waiting on them to be we with us? They have an agenda. We do yeah. not. Right. Mm-hmm. We better get an agenda real quick. Yeah. Or. Or what? Or we keep handing it over to them and we get, keep giving things overturned. Don't right. say gay, no Roe v. Wade, no uh, infrastructure. Book fans. <laughs> yeah. Stripping we education. What, yeah. We know what all of it looks like because there are horror movies about all these things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think there are precursors out there. Just Absolutely. like Absolutely. Certain movies that's been out. Absolutely. And... And it looks like it's, it's it's to say, let me show you all what's about to happen. You know, we are crossing over to life imitating art now. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, I often joke, but I think it's very true now. Idiocracy was a, a, a documentary. Mm. I think the movie Idiocracy was a documentary because that's where we are. Yeah, that is <laughs> literally where we are. We are uh-huh. in Don't Look Up. Mm. And yes. we are in idiocracy because mm-hmm. holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, it's almost like an avalanche. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it's just going to keep getting worse. Yes. It is. Mm-hmm. And, and, and um, man, I hate to feel or think or be hyperbolic, you know, it's just. Yeah, but that's. But I think, I think this is real. just the reality of yeah. this thing. That's and real. I think we just need to start bracing ourselves, which goes back to us even having this podcast, period, is to help us to recognize what's in front of our face mm-hmm. and deal with it. Yeah. Not run from it, because that's basically what, you know, Sylvia and Harley are saying. Like, they're, they're saying, listen, face this shit head on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't hide. Don't try to come in here and present me with some pretty little lies no you know um and with this information as as we getting because it's it's really gonna hit us it's like when i wake up on on monday morning like i'm like what the hell happened over the weekend because i know something happened right Right. some kind of calamity some type of killing something happened because that's what's been programmed to happen yeah so it's like we're being prepared for it and how do we set our hearts right in such a way to be able to deal with the calamities of the world? How do we how do we get our hearts right? And I'm I'm curious. Um, for I'll say for me, 
I really tried to center myself every day, mm-hmm. you know, just to be prepared for whatever, because I don't know when my last day is. No. I don't know when the last day for my children, you know, I just have to mentally be prepared. You know, what, what do you do, Harley, for yourself to just be prepared? Um, well, one of the, I try to remember this because when I read it just resonated with me. Um, it was someone who tweeted, um, wanting a livable, livable planet is not ideology. It's survival instinct. Um, yes. and I think <laughs> that for me is like, especially when someone is like, well, oh, you're just so like a tree hugger hippie. Like I've heard all of that being described, um, to me like that's who I am and I'm like but it's more than just like you know oh I just want to be vegan or you know I just I'm trying to survive I'm trying to live um Mm -hmm. and so I'm also taking that as when I'm living when I'm trying to live I'm trying to survive I'm trying to do it um with joy with whatever amount of joy that I can find in that moment, in that day with my relationships, with the people that I love, um, because it's going to be hard to survive without that network, without that group of people around you. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's just trying not to give into the feeling of tucking my head in my shell (laughs) and just, yeah, <laughs> you know, living within me and my circle, and just completely blocking out the world. Blocking out the world. I want to raise all of us up together, mm-hmm. yeah. so we can face this together and have an actual community, a sense of community. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's time. awesome. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Sylvie? What are you doing? I try to make sure that because I and purposefully informed Mm -hmm. I intentionally disseminate that information regardless of the impact Mm -hmm. because I feel like regardless of of whatever the information is Mm -hmm. we have to know Yep. whether we feel like it or not we we have to brace for impact Mm -hmm. because it's happening I constantly say, like, the earth don't like us. We have fucked up and it's trying to (laughs) evict us. Yeah. Yes. So I want to be on the good side where they remember, like, you were less harmful. (laughs) Right. I see you over there, Sylvia, trying to to (laughs) help us out. I'm I'm going to hold the little space. I'm not going to crush you like a dome over you. (laughs) Yeah. I I saw you, the work that you were doing, trying to plant more wildflowers. Right. You were helping your mom last week. I think yeah, that was right. so cool. Yeah, that was, they were good. You know, in, intentionally living, really right. honestly, because I, I, I said it in season one, I don't know if I have 30 minutes, 30 days, or 30 right. years. Right. Whatever time I have is a bonus. Right. Every day is a bonus. hmm So um, I don't want to do anything that is harmful to other people, but the truth can be harmful. Yeah. But the truth is helpful before it's harmful. Yeah. I really honestly believe that. So to me, it's it's more than centering myself. It's also making sure that in that centering, I'm still awake. Mm-hmm. Because I think sometimes, like Harley said, you want to just go back in your shell. Just put your mm-hmm. head, just tuck it under. And I, I'm terrified that one little piece of information is enough of a spark to wake up more people right because i do i do honestly have hope when i say every week the better is possible that it is possible to fix some of this right yes in our lifetimes in everybody who is alive right now i feel like it is possible for each of us to start doing something that will change the situation for mm-hmm. the better. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think we all have our own work cut out for us Yeah, that we can do to help the world be a little bit better than what it is right now. Yep. Well, this was awesome. 
um, <laughs> even though it was like a terrible to talk topic to talk about. Yeah. But I think the conversation, like I said, has to happen. More people have to be informed. Lori, I hope that we kind of helped you out a little bit too yes. with this information. Um, didn't scare you too much. I know it right. is a very scary thing, but yeah. um yeah, I, I hope that again the show was helpful to you, that it makes your life better in some way, and that it um just reminds you, yeah, that better is possible. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. That's it for this week's show. I'm Lori Scott. And I'm Sylvia Johnson. And you've been listening to What's Been Better. A big thank you to Lagan Music Inc. for providing our music. This show is edited and produced by us with a little help from our family and friends. We love you all. We want to hear what's been better for you. To be a guest on the show, send us an email to questions at whatsbeenbetter.com. Or you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at What's Been Better Podcast. Thanks for listening.